I honestly didn't want to build this deck. Frankly, I, I really didn't think about it after building other stuff like Shoujo Doji and whatnot. But after seeing the price of Go Ahead Mikani, I decided I might as well finish building it before Alter Ego Messiah. It's Chaos. He was gone, guys. I'm Z4 here today. I am back to cover Chaos. I've never covered Chaos, even though I've been holding on to these parts since 05. But uh, yeah, I just didn't really feel like covering the deck because I just didn't like it. Uh, yes, I know we got a PR that greatly strengthened the deck and we also received you know, set 8 support which is pretty nice. Today my aim is to try and build the deck without the PR and this is mainly because some people just can't get their hands on it despite the fact that you know I, I already have. But today let's just actually go through it in general and try and talk about a list of chaos without the PR to see if it can be done. Our right deck consists of one Desire Devil Tabitha, one copy of uh, this is Deep Sonica, one copy of uh, Quagmire of Solace Chaos, and one copy of Approaching Fangs Chaos. So, first off, out of the bat, you notice that I'm not actually playing the Chaos right line. Um, this is because you only play the Chaos right line if you actually intend to play um, the Chaos Order, which requires Chaos in the soul. Uh, other than that, for example, the Great Zero Chaos is just nice to have. The Great One Chaos is really bad because it doesn't always guarantee you a soul charge. You sometimes just whiff and then in fact it just misses and then you just pack up and go home. You've essentially just lost the game then. then. Since we are not playing the Chaos PR, we uh, decided to play this guy instead. His skill is very simple. When placed, you just soul charge 1. And the second skill of Rega is uh, if you have 10 or more soul, he gains 10. So it's just nice in case you toolbox him out of soul, which can be done with this deck. Uh, last, nextly, uh, for Chaos, we have Quagmire Solace. Uh, his skill is very simple. When rolled upon by approaching Fangs Chaos, uh, you simply soul charge 1. And if the soul charge card is a normal card, you get to draw a card. If it is a trigger card, you can call a card from your soul. Can. You don't have to. In addition, if you soul charge an order, you just completely whiff this effect. So just keep in mind that that's a thing. Last but not least is the main star of the show, which is approaching Fangs Chaos. Now, Chaos is a very well-designed boss because of his skills both complement each other as well as it really assists the deck. Frankly, he pulls the whole deck together. Uh, if there was anything worse than this, uh, I, I doubt this deck would be possible. Uh, his first skill is once per turn, count plus one and discard one. We look at the top three cards of your deck. One goes to the hand, one goes to the soul, and one goes to the rear guard as a superior call. So for minus one, you go plus two, which means it's obviously just a net total of plus one. It builds a soul condition, it puts a body on the board, and you get to discard cards, which is important in this deck because this is a more drop zone focused for chaos, as we will see later. His second and main skill is when he attacks, choose if you have eight or more cards in the soul with different names, uh, choose one of your rear guards and he gains ten. If you have 13 or more, all your rear guards gain ten instead. So this is basically equal to a trans rotter, but just so much better, so much more consistent. Uh, unfortunately, the only downside is that you know the 13 soul requirement is a, a nightmare to achieve. So you need to actually keep in mind when playing this deck that this is what you want to get. However, accelerating and going too fast is also not the way to go. You'll just straight up lose because you know just like how borrow players, if you turbo to you know 15 soul and didn't watch your resources, you you just easily die. The same works for chaos here. Moving on to our Great Trees in general, we play one copy of Chaos for the right deck and three copies of Chaos for the main deck. Uh, one copy of Time Chariot Dragon, uh, two copies of this guy, Xylemon, I believe, and then four copies of Cold Blooded Killer, Mikami. So, as you can tell, there's a lot of Great Trees in this deck, but uh, it's not too big of a concern because you know Chaos as, as a Highlander style deck, uh, you generally just, you know, it's fine to play so many different names. Uh, so Chaos is for the right deck and for the main deck, the Persona right is very important. As much as it may brick you, it is important. And in addition, if you happen to be playing the promo, you will want to play more copies of Chaos in your main deck. So do keep that in mind. Now of course, uh, one of the other main cards of the deck is of course Cold-Blooded Killer Mikani. Mikani, when placed uh, on the rear guard circle, you can't blast one, soul blast one. The grade of the card you soul blasted is the same grade that Mikani can choose one of your opponent's rear guard to retire. You rarely, or if not never, use this skill, but in the event that you do actually need to shoot someone out uh, in a very important matchup, then yes, this is a very good piece of spot removal. Second skill is when he, when your Vanguard attacks, if your Vanguard's soul has eight or more cards with different name, you can stand Mikani. If you stand Mikani by this effect, he must move into the soul at the end of the turn. So Mikani is essentially a 
net zero if you manage to play all his skills. But you, you know, as early as you know, turn three, he can easily withstand because eight or more cards in soul with different names is actually quite easy, considering that with the right that you generally already start off with three plus. So it's really quite easy to get, and the more you diversify the deck, the easier it is for me kind to trigger its effects. Uh, the only issue is of course calling him out, which the deck solves in three ways. One, you just play better. Two, you use the PR. Or three, you use the new set 8 support, which actually makes looping Mikani easier, which allows you for better multi-attacks. Mikani is the only card in this deck that actually multi-attacks, so keep that in mind. In terms of our more other exquisite choices, we also have Time Jared Dragon. Time Jared Dragon, when placed, move a card from your hand to the soul, you draw a card. Generally, the only way you can just drop off cards you don't want to see anymore into the soul to specifically help for your name card. It's just a one-off. And then, of course, with Zoimot. Zoimot is from set 7. You may see him in Juju, you may see him in uh, Transwater, you will see him being played here in this deck. Why is he being played? Uh, card blast one and move him to the soul. Look at the top two cards in your deck, put one of them to the soul, and call the other one. So it helps you get more names in the soul and you generally can open the top two to you know hope you get something better than the column. Of course you can whiff and just pull out two triggers or even worse two orders, but you know it's generally just not a bad card to play. Uh, I do want to mention one more thing and that is he's at a two off just because of his skill. Uh, if you are just not comfortable playing him at two, you can always just come back to one. Moving on to our great twos, our great twos we play one uh quite my solace. Chaos for the right deck. Two copies of uh, this is Selfish Engraver because I find them very attractive. I have one of this and one of this. Uh, it's all very simple. Quite minor Solace is here obviously from the right deck, so uh, we don't really need to explain that. Uh, then, of course, we have this girl. Her skill is very simple. It's just when she attacks, you can so charge one. It's just different names because this is a Highlander style deck. You want to play different one offs and one offs. Speaking of different one-offs and one-offs, you can also play her. She's from the Transmorator deck. Her skill is really fun. When placed from hand, you come across one and move a great zero card from your hand to the soul. Choose a great one of the higher card from your soul and put it into your hand. So this is how, like I said, you can toolbox your soul, including even adding a premature of copy of this to get an 18k beta and booster. So it's, it doesn't really contribute to the soul condition, but it's just nice to carry around as a one-off. Last but not least, we have Selfish Engraver, who I really like. Really, really like. Her skills are very simple. When her attack hits, you can soul charge one. Her second skill is at the end of the battle when she attacks, if your soul is 10 or more cards, move her to the soul and come to charge one. Yes, you minus one, but you get that valuable counter charge, which is very important. And the other skill, of course, being able to just on hit soul charge is nice. Even though you saw the previous grade two, that wasn't, you know, not, not this one. The previous grade two, which was an on attack, this one's on hit. So yeah, just keep in mind, we don't play that many great tools in Chaos because we want to save our front row slots for Mikani. Speaking of Mikani, our great one lineup consists of Deep Sonica for the right deck. Uh, and then after that, we play two copies of Friend of the Underworld Ling. We play three copies of Song of Praise Can Be Heard. We play three copies of uh, Inhale Pit. We play four copies of Go Hit Mikani. And of course, three to four different perfect guards. So as you can tell, yeah, this is a much more great one centric list and for good reason the great ones are really good for chaos so this is for the right deck i won't explain this anymore uh i'll move on to pgs you honestly want to play as many different pgs as you can uh if you have your copy of arlen or even the sentinel pg you can play it but frankly as long as you have just different perfect guards it does help you uh next up we have friend of the other one ling ling is a card in trans rocker and as well as Raju. so you may recognize her when placed over the top two cards of your deck, add one of them to the soul, put the other one at the bottom. Just nice filter. And it's free, it's a free skill, so don't forget that. Uh, Inhale Pit is also from uh, Transrotter. She's a Transrotter support that has seen play in, in Chaos because of how effective it is. You soul blast one great one or higher card to put two card two great zero cards from your from your drop zone into your soul. Now this is a very important skill because you know, as D progresses, you have more and more triggers, right? So you want to play as many different name triggers as possible, and then you can keep just soul charging it. You have a total of like 16 different triggers if you play it, right? So, not 16, I think about 15. If you manage to play at least 12 different name triggers, it will contribute a lot to your inhale pit, which is why she's easily a 3 or if not 4 off if you feel as lucky as me. But someone who's a definite 4 off is Go Hit. Go Hit, Mikami. 
Go hit me Kami when place your soul charge one. This is why Alter Ego Messiah is buying up this card at about 3,000 yen a piece. I'm filming this video in the year 2022, so let me know if I'm right or wrong. Uh, the second skill is obviously uh, if your Vanguard's great to greater, you can move it to a soul. You can call a card that, that is a uh, great tree with Mikan in its name to a Rega circle. So basically, you trade Go Ahead into a regular Cold Blooded Killer Mikani. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. It helps you train out your Mikani, and it's also a quick body to throw around on turn one, who can even upgrade himself to a great tree. Frankly, one of the best uh, Great Cross Epic cards I've seen in terms of not just art, silly naming, but also just the, 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 the theming of it. Most of the time, the Great Cross Epic cards in terms of their old and new versions, uh, they work together well in the same deck, but they don't really explicitly work together. This is downright really funny to see how your Great One Mechanics can help you build your condition with the Soul Charge and move to the Soul, and then you can also bring up your main endgame, who is, of course, the Big Mikani. But it doesn't stop there. The Glitter ability, which counts whenever you play him in the same deck as Chaos, is that he counts as different names in the Soul. Your, your different go-ahead Mikanis, uh, yeah, the reason why you can play for is because they all count as different names. So the more you use this skill, the more different names you get in the soul. Easily up to four different names because you have up to four copies of Go Ahead Mikan. Uh, absolutely buy this card if you can because it's just that good. Now that we've gone around all the soul and whatnot, how do we actually play it? Uh, our last order is Song of Extolment can be heard. Uh, it's skill is very simple. Uh, you play it if your Vanguard's Chaos. So you can't play it on turn one for this deck, but you can play it on turn two. Onwards, you basically choose three normal units from your drop zone and put it into the soul, and then your Vanguard gains 10. Uh, your Vanguard gains 10 is nice because um, Chaos himself doesn't have a way to give himself power. So, yeah, it's nice. And also, you get to add three cards from your drop zone. So, as we mentioned just now, Inhale Pit is what adds all our great zeros to the soul. Now, anything else, you just use Song Extorman. This also counts in terms of helping you serve up and save your spare mechanics or even your spare go ahead that have fallen into the drop zone, you can now just pick them up, throw them inside Chaos, and they're safe and sunk. Which is nice because you know, that, that's a really fun way to do recursion and recovery uh, while still building your endgame. So the reason why I play 3 is because, generally speaking, as much as I thought in the early game this would be fun to play as an 18k Vanguard attack, uh, after extensive testing, yeah, it's really bad. So you do just want to play this generally around turn 2 to 3 onwards. So 3 copies is fine. Lastly, for our grade zeros, we play six many tr different triggers as possible in our starter. Because, like I mentioned just now, the more different triggers you play, the better for your trans rotor support. So, uh, yeah, it's really as simple as that. I really won't go through and do it. You should know it by now. Crits, draws, pe crits, draws, heals, over trigger. Yeah, just play what you can afford. And yeah, that wraps up my Chaos deck profile for set 8 without the promo. Uh, frankly, yeah, I do actually like this deck a lot. I may actually like this more than the promo build because I find this more uh, creative to play, I find this more um, fulfilling to play, but that's not to say that the promo is bad. The promo is a good card and if you have it, you should certainly be playing it. But if you just don't have the option of promos around, then I'll easily say with Go Ahead as well as Song of Praise, you generally still get a relatively or if not very fun Dark States deck. Dark States as a whole is doing really well in this series, so if you're looking for something a bit more cheaper but not too cheap like Trans Rotter and still works effectively, play this. I lost to a Chaos deck at WGT uh, before set 8, and that was with the PR. So, yeah, can you imagine if you now played with the PR? I don't know. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.